Welcome to the Open Sky Kitchen. Today we're going to talk about measuring. So if you're learning to cook, learning to measure properly is a really important skill. In a lot of countries, people use weights for measuring their food when they're cooking. But in Canada and the United States, we usually use cups and spoons. So we're going to talk about how to measure your ingredients properly so that you don't waste ingredients and your food turns out uh, the way you want it to. So there's lots of different tricks and we're going to go through a few common ingredients that you're going to be using uh, all the time. So let's just go over the tools first. So these cups here, sometimes they come in different colors or they can be all the same color, are your dry measure cups. So these are for measuring things like flour, rice, things that are dry. And measuring spoons are, are also used for dry dry ingredients and can be used for small quantities of, of wet ingredients like vanilla, things like that. These cups, on the other hand, are for liquid ingredients. So milk, water, um, coffee. We'll talk about how to use each of these with different ingredients so that your cooking can be uh, as good as you want it to be. So the first ingredient we're going to talk about is flour. So flour is one that sometimes can cause problems. So a mistake that a lot of people make when they're measuring flour is they take their measuring cup and they just scoop it in like this and kind of shake it off till it looks kind of flat and then they put it in their bowl. That's not how we're going to measure flour. To in order to ensure that we don't get too much flour, we want to do a couple things. First you want to light, loosen up the flour. So I'm using a whisk, so I'm just getting a little bit of air in there. If you don't have a whisk, you can use a fork, just fluff it up a bit. So just making sure it's not packed down because as it sits in the cupboard it tends to settle down a little bit. So we just want to get some air in there. I'm going to use a spoon and I'm going to gently scoop some of that loosened up flour into my measuring cup. And this way I'm not getting too much flour because if you are measuring several cups and they're not, uh, they're not, the flour is not loosened up like this. You can end up with too much flour and your cookies or your cake or whatever can be a little bit dry. So I've scooped out too much. So now I'm going to take a knife, a flat edged knife, and I'm just going to tap it like this and then flatten it. So it's nice and smooth on top. It's exactly level. And I'm going to put it in my bowl. So just going to do that one more time. Just so I've loosened up my flour a little bit and I'm taking that loosened flour and I'm gently putting it in my measuring cup. Then I take my flat edge knife and I just scoop that off so it's nice and level. When you're choosing a knife to use for leveling, make sure you choose one that has a flat edge. You can see this one here has a bit of a curve. So when I scrape that across the flour, it's going to dig into the flour and change the amount. This one's nice and flat, so that works perfectly. All right. So the next ingredient we're going to look at is sugar. And we've got two types of sugar that we're going to, going to measure. So first we're going to start with white sugar. And this one's fun because it's the easiest one. So for white sugar, you can do the scoop. So I'm just going to take my measuring cup, get a heaping scoop full of sugar, and I'm going to use my flat knife again and just flatten that off so it's perfectly straight. So I could spoon that in too, but I don't have to. It'll, it'll work out the same. So I can scoop that right in. It's nice when you have a big bucket like this. It's easy to get your scoop in. And then we just flatten that off with a nice flat edge knife. And that one's fun. It's nice and easy. The one that's a little bit different is brown sugar. When you measure brown sugar, you can't use the scoop method quite so simply. We don't have too much brown sugar in here, so I'm going to use a smaller cup. I am going to scoop this in here. But instead of leveling it off at the start, I'm going to pat that down. So I'm going to use my knife and pack that down as firmly as I can into the measuring cup. So when you measure brown sugar, you're measuring packed brown sugar. So you can see I pack that in, and then I can level it off. But I want to make sure that brown sugar is nice and packed in there. So when I put it into my bowl, it kind of holds its shape. It's like a little puck. So I'm going to do that again. I can scoop it, but I have to make sure it's packed in. And with a small bag like this, it's a little bit tricky. But I can use the plastic bag to kind of pat it down if I want to, so I don't have to so make it a little bit easier. 
So that's quite flat. I can just neaten it up a little bit and then dump that in. So that's brown sugar. When you see your ingredients for brown sugar, it always means packed, packed brown sugar. So salt, you're probably not gonna need a big cup full of salt, so we're gonna use our measuring spoons. And let's just find half a teaspoon. We're gonna get half a teaspoon. So my measuring spoons are nice, nicely marked. It says half a teaspoon. And this is an easy way too. You can just scoop and flatten, or and scrape off. So you've got a nice level amount. And I can put that in my dish. So just scoop and flatten and in my dish. So you can do that with, with most things, spices, cinnamon, all your dry ingredients. Baking soda is an ingredient you're going to use in a lot of baking. So for baking soda, you scoop in. Whoops, get this so you can see it. You level it off. It's a bit, I like to put mine in a jar so it's easier to measure. So I've got it nice and level. Baking soda sometimes gets clumpy. So you can take it, if your, your hand should be clean, and just flatten it a little bit before you add it into your dish. Because there's nothing worse than a big ball of baking soda in a delicious cookie. It doesn't taste very good. So just because it, the way it settles, it gets clumpy. We'll do that one more time. So you just measure it, flatten it just like you did with the others with a nice flat spoon. And then put it on your hand and crush it a little bit so there's no lumps. And there you're good. Vanilla is a common flavoring ingredient, a liquid flavoring ingredient that you're going to use a lot, probably in baking. So one trick for measuring your vanilla, I'm going to use a measuring spoon. And instead of measuring it over my ingredients, I'm going to measure it away from the ingredients over a small bowl because it's really easy for your hand to shake or for something to happen and you measure too much. Half a teaspoon of vanilla. And now I've measured it, I know it's the right amount, I can pour it into my ingredients. Uh, if I do it over my ingredients, it's really easy for your hand to shake or for something to happen so that you end up putting too much in. And um, that can be ex uh, expensive, it can ruin all your in ingredients if you have too much of something. So that's an important trick. Now we're going to look at measuring liquid ingredients. So I've got my liquid measuring cups. And the trick with measuring liquid ingredients is measuring them at eye level. I'm going to take my water here, and I want one cup of water, so I'm going to squat down and look so that that measure is exactly at my eye level. And then I can see, boom, it gets to the right line. And I know I've got enough water in there. If you don't do that, um, you can measure too much or too little because the direction that your eye is seeing it from changes where the water level looks when you're looking at it from above or below. So keeping it at eye level helps you make sure that you're meeting the red line. And if you find it hard to get down for your, on your knees, you can try lifting it up to eye level and measuring it that way. It's better if you can crouch down, but it's not always possible. So just holding it at your eye level and making sure that it's just at the red line will help you. And we can pour that in. So you'd use this method for measuring oil, water, uh, coffee, any liquid ingredients, milk, things like that. And the last thing we're going to look at is butter or margarine. Here at Open Sky we use butter in the kitchen, but butter can be expensive, so sometimes people use margarine for cooking. I've got a dishcloth underneath my cutting board so that it won't slip. If I don't have this, I can move my cutting board around and it makes it harder to cut. So when I'm cooking, I always put a damp cloth underneath my cutting board. It keeps it in place. So I'm going to measure some butter now. I've got um, one pound of butter. So these big blocks are one pound. In Canada, this is generally how you'll find butter in the store. So one pound of butter equals two cups. So if I want one cup of butter, I just cut this in half. You can even see some measurements along the side. 
If I wanted a quarter cup of butter, I would measure it into fourths and I would cut one quarter. So I'm going to cut a quarter cup right now. If I use the instructions here on the side, I can see the quarter mark. I'm going to use a nice sharp knife. And you can cut through the tin foil, that's fine. I'll just peel that off after. Sometimes if the butter's hard, you have to kind of saw back and forth a little bit. I'm using a small knife. There, so I've got a quarter cup of butter. Sometimes you'll have smaller bits of butter or margarine available, and you're not quite sure. It might not be in a nice square like this, so it's harder to measure. So I'm going to measure a cup of water. I'm using a bigger cup here, so I'm going to go to eye level because my knees are a bit sore. And if this is a quarter cup of butter, it will increase the amount of water in my dish by a quarter cup. So it displaces that much water. And yes, I've got one and a quarter cups here. Of, so that tells me that my butter is a quarter cup. So I added a quarter cup to the one cup of water. So if you've got a block of margarine that's not evenly cut or it's not square, you can just cut off some margarine or butter and add it to water. It should increase the water by the amount that you need. Right. So those are some tips to measure ingredients. Um, following those, will help you create better baked goods. It will help you save money on ingredients because you're not wasting them. And it will help your food taste better. So read your, read your recipe thoroughly and measure your ingredients accurately and you will have better success in your cooking. Okay, thanks, we'll see you next time at the Open Sky Kitchen.